the National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, The Trap. It is 1.10 a.m., May 17th, 1948. The highway across a barren and thinly populated portion of West Texas is deserted, except for a truck and trailer pushing steadily westward toward El Paso. Oh, mm. oh, boy, that nap felt good. You sure were snoring. I could barely hear the motor. How long was our sleep? Since 8 o'clock last night. Almost 1 a.m. now. <sighs> How are we doing? Hey, we'll be in El Paso by 6. We're right on schedule. You want me to take the wheel? No. Wait till we gas up at Frito Junction. It's only another 50 miles. Okay. Yeah, I sure would be glad to get home and see my wife. <laughs> you called a long distance when we stopped for supper. Yeah, but I'm not an old-timer like you. This is our first baby we're expecting. You already got four. Yeah, don't let me kid you, Sam. You feel the same way about all of them, no matter how many you have. What are you hoping for? Oh, just a healthy kid, I guess. That's all. Although I, I, I'd kind of like a little girl. Yeah, you get one, you'll have a real picnic. Girls are born smarter than we are. My youngest one, she can work me over for anything she wants faster than a quarter horse can get moving. <laughs> you don't look like you're feeling any pain from it, Grover. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't. It's a big kick, getting them things they want. Yeah, but don't get me wrong, I'm just as fond of the three boys, too. Yeah. But, well, a girl does get under your skin a little more. They are oh, more affectionate, like. Boy grows up and you want to kiss him. <laughs> He kicks up his heels. You get to be eight, nine years old, the closest you get to him is shaking hands, you know what I mean? Sure, sure do. <laughs> I guess we were the same with our folks. I wouldn't trade them for anything, though, boys or girls. And they're your own blood, you... Well, you'll find out, Sims. You got a lot of fun and living ahead of you. They'll worry you when they get sick, and they'll break your heart when they get kid troubles that you can't help them with, but... Nothing you'll ever have will mean as much to you as your young'uns. <laughs> I've been worrying about mine already, and she... He? <laughs> well, whatever it is, ain't even <laughs> here yet. I keep wondering if I'll be able to make it. You know, bring him up, educate him, help him to be somebody. Yeah, that's something else you'll worry about with each new one. Man, I'm so scared now, I think I'll just settle for one kid and leave it at that. <laughs> that's what I said 12 years ago with our first, but you'll change your mind. Yeah, I guess so. Mary says that she hey, wants... Hey, hey, Huh? What's that ahead? Where? Oh, somebody waving a red lantern. We must be coming to that narrow bridge over Lannan's Creek. Well, you suppose it's been washed out again by a flash flood? Yeah, it could be, although it don't look like there's been any rain here since we started the haul east four days ago. Just the same, they got it blocked. Yeah. Look, Grover, they put up a detour sign. Yeah, it probably wants us to go to the left end of the old road. No, sign points to the right, and the fellow with the lantern is waving us that way. Yeah, I... I guess he knows what he's doing. Don't look like much of a road this way, does it? Oh, it's going to be mighty rough going. I hope this don't last too long. <sighs> hey, this ain't even a road. Oh, it's just a little dead-end turnoff. That guy must have been crazy sending us in here. Back in this rig out is sure going to be a job. Ah, what a dumb trick. I'm going to walk back and ask him what in the name of blazes made him turn us off this way. I'll come with you. You'd think they'd have a highway patrol car stationed there to... Wait a minute. What's the matter? Look by the road. The guy with the lamp is moving that detour sign. 
Get back in the truck, quick. What is it, Grover? What's wrong? It's like a hijack. Get it rolling backwards and don't mind what you hit. Just keep going. Grover! Grover! Hey, don't shoot anymore! Don't shoot! He's hurt! You can take him! I said you could take everything. You didn't have... Mary! Mary! My kid! <laughs> At 9 p.m. the following night, the bodies of Warren Grover and Luther Sims were discovered and the sheriff notified. He called for help from the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned. Here are the bodies, Jace. They must have been dragged into the brush when the truck was stolen. Lucky thing Mr. Archer here found them. Mighty lucky. Could have been here for days. How'd you happen to come across them, Mr. Archer? Well, it weren't me. One of my kids found them. We uh, pulled off the highway, fixing to make camp for the night. Boy was gathering wood for the fire. Then out of yelp and come legging out of here like a scared jackrabbit. You make a habit of camping out at night with your family? There ain't nothing much a man can do about it when he ain't working. Them motels and places cost money. Where do you come from? Up Arkansas way. We're heading for California. Migratory workers, huh? Mm. You can talk to his family later if you want, Jace. I let Archer pull his car into a clearing up the highway about 200 yards the other side of the bridge. He didn't want to keep the kids around here. Eh, if you ain't got nothing else to ask me, I'd like to get back to him. My wife's crumb shaky. All right, go ahead. But when you get to the car, stay put. I ain't got no place special to go. Thank you. You got a flashlight, Jace? Mine's about to peter out. Yeah. There, you can give your batteries a rest. You say they were due in El Paso at 6 this morning, eh? Yep, was on schedule, too, until they got here, I reckon. Made their supper stop on time last night. The company checked back. When would you get the request to look for the truck? Got the description and license number early this afternoon when they was overdue and nobody had heard from them. The company figured if they'd had a breakdown, they'd have called in. According to their schedule, they should have reached this spot a little after midnight last night. And whoever took that truck had plenty of time to get a long ways from here with it before sunup. Not much chance of anybody spotting them. That's right. We'd better take a look around. I've been all over the ground between here and the highway, but I guess it won't hurt to look again. Condition my light was in, I might have missed something. I can show you where they were when they dropped blood stains on the ground out here. Yeah, I saw them. Right where the truck was. Stains aren't far from the tire marks. They're funny tires, Jace. Different pattern right smack down the center of them. Well, no, those inside tracks were made by Archer's car when he drove in. Covered part of the truck marks. Boy, this place is rutted. He'd fall right into the same track. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Ah, here's something. What is it? Cartridge shell. Look at it. Forty-five caliber army automatic. Oh, and here's another one. Well, we won't have to wait for an autopsy to tell us what the murder weapon was. Hey, I just thought of something. What? That forty-five army automatic. There's an army camp about 40 miles further on. J- just 10 miles this side of Frito Junction. Oh, I'm afraid that won't help us, Sheriff. Number marking on these shells is a 17. That's the old 1917 ammunition series, World War I. No camp would be using ammo that old. Uh, too bad. I thought for a minute we might have a fast lead. You arranged to have the bodies moved? Yep, sent my deputy to town for an undertaker. Good. Let's walk out to Archer's car, talk to his wife and kids. There's one thing I don't understand, Jace. Why did they pull their truck off the road? A trucker riding alone might do it to grab some sleep, but not a scheduled rig with two drivers. I can't figure that either. Archer's car's up this way, other side of the bridge. Might as well leave your car right where it is. Not much of a walk. Sure. Hold it, Sheriff. What is it? This mark just off the road shoulder here. Hmm. Sort of a circle in the dirt. Yeah. And whatever made the circle was wet and kind of oily. What do you suppose made it? Oh, it would make an oily, round impression that size. Oh, I don't know. Unless maybe it was a lantern. That's what it was, all right. And here's something else. Four small rectangular marks in the earth. Base of each mark, about two by four. Well, I can't figure that. Unless somebody had a table out here. I don't think it was a table. Another thing that would make four marks space like that's a wooden sawhorse. Say, did this bridge ever wash out? Sometimes, when there's a flash flood. Hey, I see what you're aiming at. When there is a flood, Highway Patrol sets up a detour sign. Sends traffic through that road over across the highway. When that happened last? Oh, not in a couple of months. Now, these marks aren't that old. 
Somebody detoured that truck into the dead-end road on this side. Lantern and Sawhorse were set in here until they were moved onto the road to set up a block. They must have had that particular truck pegged then. Came through at a time when there isn't much traffic between the last town to the east and Frito Junction. Come on, let's talk to Archer. You got a list of the cargo the truck was carrying? Told my deputy to wire a request for it after we found the truck had been stolen. It'll come through to my office. Good, because we'll have to track this down through cargo. I got a hunch that the truck has been emptied and ditched by now. Archer didn't know any more than he'd already told us, and his wife and three pale, undernourished kids couldn't add anything. We waited until the bodies were picked up and then headed back for town. The next morning, there was a wire from the trucking company waiting at the sheriff's office, a list of the missing truck's cargo. Here's a report on the cargo, Jace. Valued at $39,000. Let's see. A shipment of automobile radios, huh? Well, that's a break. Why? Because they all have serial numbers. It'd be a lot of work if they try and change the numbers, and if they don't, one of the sets will turn up sooner or later. Yeah, but they didn't send the numbers through to us, Jace. Just a set make and model. I'm radioing my headquarters to get them. Come on. Austin can contact the manufacturer and have him send a complete list of the serials through. Then they can distribute the list to all law enforcement agencies on a statewide bulletin. We don't stand much chance of cracking this if we have to wait for a hot car radio to turn up. Don't worry. We're not going to wait. We've got plenty of other things to do. How many deputies you got handy? Three. How about send them back along the highway? We know where Grover and Sims made their supper stop. I'd like to find out if they made any stops after that, before they were killed. Good idea. As a matter of fact, whoever stole the truck may have turned it around and headed back that way. Killers may have been spotted. It's a chance. On the other hand, maybe I ought to send one man toward Frito Junction in El Paso, just in case the truck kept heading west. Never mind. I'll handle that part of it myself. I'm heading for Frito Junction as soon as I can make that radio call. I put through a request for the serial numbers, then headed for Frito Junction. On the way, I got a radio call from KTXA. The missing truck had always made a regular stop at the mobile gas station in Frito Junction. When I got to the station, I sent for the man who'd been on duty the night the truck was hijacked. Yep, I was on duty night before last, Ranger, but Grover and Sims didn't stop here. I know they didn't. They never got this far. What I want to know is, did you see their truck? The station's right at the crossroads. If the truck came through with somebody else driving it, there's a chance you might have seen it. Ranger, I'd like to help you, but, well, there ain't much business during the night, even though the boss does keep the place open as an accommodation of truckers. I usually stretch out on a cot in the office. If a truck stops, I get up. If it don't, I just hear it go past. Any other stations around here open at night? Nope. The truck Grover and Sims were driving always stopped here, didn't it? Yep. company they drove for has a credit account here. They haul between El Paso and Houston. Well, the tanks are always just about dry when they hit here on the return haul from Houston. I see. You mean the truck would be too low on gas to go much further than this without filling up, providing it came this way? That's right. Thanks. That's a big help. You're welcome, Ranger. Wish I could help more. Grover and Sims were pretty nice guys. That's the trouble with a killing. The wrong people usually get killed. And it sounds like you've got an impatient customer out there. Yep, one of the soldiers from Camp Boulder. Boys are busy on the pumps. I might as well help him. Hey, he's got the drive blocked. I'll ask him to back up so you can get your car and trailer out. It's all right. He doesn't seem to want gas. May want directions to someplace. Hey, you got a shop here? Yeah, but you have to pull around the back. You're blocking the ranger's car. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Just want to make sure you can help me. Doesn't seem to be much wrong with that motor. There isn't anything wrong with it. It's in top shape. And what do you want to put it in the shop for? Got a new radio. Thought you might be able to install it for me. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, The Trap, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. A soldier with a new car radio. It didn't have to mean anything, but it might. The make and model of the set he had matched what I was looking for. I got the serial number from the carton that came in and phoned it through to the sheriff for a fast check against the manufacturer's list. Then I went into the shop to ask a few questions. You'll have to drill holes for the antenna, I guess. Unless you want to wear it in your hat, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a good set. Yeah, yeah. Pretty expensive. 
Well, it told me it sells for about 85 bucks. What did you pay for it? Well, I, uh, I didn't buy it. I made a deal for it, sort of. What kind of a deal? What are you asking me that for, Ranger? Something wrong? I didn't say that. I was just wondering what kind of a deal a fella could get on a car radio. A man you got this from have any others he wanted to get rid of? Well, I, I, I don't think so. He just gave me this for a trade, you know. On what? Something my head that he needed. Uh, look, my pass is only good for a couple hours. I didn't think it'd be this long. Maybe I better let it go, and I'll, I'll come back in next time I'm in town. Okay. I think you better stay around. But my pass, Maybe I... I can get you a little extension of time. What's the camp number? I'll call your commanding officer. Well, what do you want to do that for? Yeah, well, what's the matter, Ranger? What is it? It's that radio. Grover and Sims were hauling a truckload of auto radios when they were hijacked and killed. What? You telling me that radio's stolen? No, I'm not. Not yet. But I'm waiting for a check on the serial number, and you're not leaving here until I get it. Oh, look, you've got to believe me. The guy gave me that set. Yeah, and you've been pretty evasive about telling me why he gave it to I you. I told you it was a trade. For what? Come on, talk up. Well, I... I can't tell you that. Get me in trouble. If this is one of the sets taken from two murdered truck drivers, you'll be in plenty of trouble unless I know where and how you got it. Sounds like you better tell him, soldier. I got the set in exchange for some gasoline. Gasoline, huh? All right, go ahead. Well, it was night before last. Just after two o'clock, I, I just started guard duty at camp. My post was along the fence by the motor pool from two to four. Hey, Ranger, that's not long after the time you said Grover was... Never mind, Milligan. Go ahead. Well, I... I heard this car stop near the fence. You sure it wasn't a truck? No, no, it was a car. So I, I walked over to the fence where it was parked. I, I sort of gave the challenge, you know, asked who it was, and a uh, man walked up. Said he needed some gas. And you gave it to him, just like that? No, huh? no, no. He, he said he'd pay me for it. I told him it was against regulations. Then he, he said it wasn't for him. He said a couple of women were stranded down the highway in their car. And then he, he said he'd give me a car radio. Oh, well, it seemed like a good deal, so I opened a pump and filled some Jeep cans for him. How many gallons? Twenty-five. And you didn't think there was anything wrong with a trade like that? An $85 radio for 25 gallons of gas. Well, the guy was stuck and asked... How could he be stuck? He was only 10 miles from the station, and it's open all night. Well, maybe he didn't know that. He knew it all right. But he didn't want to bring a stolen truck into this station, and he didn't want to get that much gas in cans from a place that might be checked. Look, Ranger, please, uh, I'm up for discharge in a couple of months. Our camp is being deactivated. I don't want to get in bad. You should have thought of that before you started to ladle out government gasoline. What kind of sidearms do you carry at the camp when you do a guard trick? Uh, regulation Army 45. Any 1917 series ammo? None that I ever saw. Are you going to give me a break? I'm not a judge. I can't give breaks. You're the only key I've got to two dead men. I'll call your post and have the MPs pick you up. The gasoline's the Army's business, but this radio is mine if it's stolen property. How could I know it was stolen? Can you describe the man you got it from? No, it was too dark. Besides... Besides, there were two men. One of them stayed in the car. It'd help your case a lot if you could tell us what they looked like. Even what kind of a car they were driving. Well, it was dark, I tell you. They talked to each other? Call each other by name? Well, yeah, yeah. The, the fellow I gave the gas to, he called the other one in the car and he said, Drive up closer, will you, Sonny Boy? Sonny Boy? Well, that's not a name. Probably just a wisecracker nickname. I'm just telling you what I heard. I'm trying to do everything I can to help you. Yeah. Just a minute. Ranger, it's for you, the sheriff. Thanks. Hello, Sheriff. Howdy, Jase. That soldier's radio is on the stolen list, all right. But I got someone my deputies dug up. Grover and Sims did make another stop after they had their supper. At 11.30 the night they were killed. Where? Roadside diner. Just stopped for coffee. At least Sims had coffee there. Told the proprietor that Grover was asleep in the cab of the truck. You talked to the proprietor yourself? Sure did. Drove out Sims as soon as the deputy gave me the report. It's Watson's Diner. A lot of truckers eat there or stop the coffee up when they're riding late. Watson know if they had a hitchhiker with them? Any rider they might have picked up? He says no, but he didn't go out to the truck, of course. From what he says, Sims was the only one in the place except for some traveling salesman who was playing the pinball machine. A fellow named Sonny Boy Jensen. Sonny Boy? That's right, Jace. What you getting excited about? Talk to Watson again. Find out what he knows about Sonny Boy Jensen, who he is and where he comes from. And meet me back at your office. I'll get there as fast as I can roll. The 
army camp was on my way, so I took the soldier with me and turned him over to the camp authorities to be held. I kept a lead foot on the gas pedal as I drove past the bridge in the side road where the truckers had been hijacked and slain. It took me almost two hours to reach the county seat. The sheriff was standing in front of his office as I drove up. Inform KTX of any change of location. We'll keep in touch with you. Howdy, Jace. Howdy. What'd you get? Something that might fit. That Jensen's been traveling up and down this highway for years, selling electrical appliances to farmers and ranchers, mostly. Men like that would have good market for car radios once that shipment cooled off. He could be our boy, all right. You get any line on where he comes from? Works out of El Paso, mostly. But his home's a small ranch about 150 miles southwest of Frito. Sonny Boy Jensen can't be his real name. No, it's Bertram Jensen. They just call him Sonny Boy. Watson said he left the diner about five minutes after Sims and Grover pulled out. Probably passed him on the highway. Had them all staked out and set up that roadblock. You better climb in. Going to El Paso? No, i turn south out of Frito and head for Jensen's Ranch. I don't think he'd take that hot merchandise into El Paso. Even if he got there before daylight, he'd run into some traffic, and that's the trucking company's home base. He'd be taking a chance on loading any place in the city. Now, I see what you mean. You better check on him while we're rolling. Unit 10 to KTXA. Unit 10 to KTXA. KTXA. Go ahead, Unit 10. This unit en route to Jensen Ranch near County Line, 150 miles southwest of Frito Junction. 10-4. Request check on subject Bertram Jensen, alias Sonny Boy Jensen, El Paso appliance dealer and owner of ranch this unit is headed toward. 10-4. Unit 10, clear. KTXA, I've been thinking, Jace. This couldn't have been a one-man job. Jensen couldn't drive the truck and his car after the hijack? It wasn't a one-man job. The soldier who gave him the gas they needed for the truck said there were two men in the car. Two men with a bad murder rap hanging over them are liable to fight, Jace. They sure are, Sheriff. Better take the safety off your gun right now. There mightn't be time later. Unit 10, go ahead, KTXA. I have a report for you on Bertram Jensen. Low record of Sonny Boy alias. Served three years in federal penitentiary Leavenworth, 1919 to 1921, for theft of army material from government armory. Had accomplice named Dolph Muni, convicted on same charge. No record on either since then. 10-4, Unit 10, clear. KTXA, Elston. That may answer a couple of our questions, Sheriff. Yep. Where Jensen got that Army 45 and the 1917 ammo series, and who his partner was, if you think he might have kept in touch with Dolph Mooney for almost 20 years. There's an old saying, Sheriff, about birds of a feather. It was after dark when we reached the Jensen Ranch. When the door opened, I knew it was Jensen. There were little wrinkles under his eyes, and his temples were gray, but his face held a youthful softness, as some faces do, whether 16 or 60. It wasn't hard to understand why they called him Sonny Boy. Well, it's been a long time since I've seen a ranger around here. You, uh, looking for somebody? Sheriff and I heard you might be able to get us a bargain on a few things. Uh, sure. What are you interested in? Automobile radios. Uh, I got a few in my warehouse in El Paso. Thought you might have something around here. No, I'm, I'm afraid not. Uh, then maybe you know somebody who has. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't know many people. I live alone here. Don't see much of anybody. Had any company this evening? No. Two ashtrays in this room don't agree with you. There are smoldering butts in both of them, so unless you smoke two cigarettes at a time and walk back and forth across the room to put them out, you haven't been alone. Oh, all right. A neighbor's visited me. Is that a crime? No. Nope. Where is he? In the kitchen. Call him. Don't go for him. Just call him from here. Uh, Doc? Hey, Doc! What's this Doc business, Jensen? Oh, well, I didn't hear anybody come in. Jensen tells us you've been visiting him. Where are you from? From Borderville. Well, that's about 50 miles from here. Yeah, and Jensen said you were a neighbor. Well, that's right, ain't it? Distance don't mean much in Texas. <laughs> I I just dropped in on Jensen unexpected. 
Matter of fact, I, I've just washed up fixing the start for home. Yeah, he he's just leaving. Oh, well, go right ahead. Uh, I'll get your coat. It's in the closet here. Oh, uh, before you open that, I'd like to ask your friend a couple of questions. Fifty miles is kind of a long walk, isn't it? Only way to leave this ranch would be in a car, and if you've got one parked outside, we didn't notice it. Uh, I was going to lend him mine. Oh, I see. You said you dropped in unexpectedly. How'd you get here without a car? Why, uh, hitched a ride. Somebody dropped me off the gate. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, if you got nothing else to ask me, I, I'd like to be going. Yeah. Imagine you would, but I'm not quite finished. Maybe you know where I could get a bargain in an automobile radio. Why, well, I don't know nothing about radios. It's too bad. I thought you might. All right, Jensen. Give him his coat. By the way, either you heard from Dolph Muni lately? Well, get out of here. You got no right asking questions. You got no warrant. You let us in, Jensen. My story is you broke in, and you ain't going to be able to deny it. Get it on that closet shelf, Case. Uh, don't try that, Jensen. Uh, Quick, Sheriff. Take that gun out of his reach. Yeah, I got it, Case. Oh. Muni! He drove through the window. Stay with Jensen. I'll get him. Come on, Jensen. Get, get on. I can see you, Muni. You better stop running before I fire. No sense trying to get in that car. It's locked. That was in the air, Muni. The next one won't be. How about it? All right. All right, don't shoot. Just walk this way with your hands high. I, I had to steal the radios, but I didn't do the killing. I didn't. I was on the highway with a detour sign when Jensen shot him. Don't tell me, Muni. Save that for the court. Where are the radios? In the barn. Hidden in bales of powder. We ditched the truck in Amber Lake. All right, Muni. Let's go in and get Sonny Boy. You can make your statement at the sheriff's office. Bertram, Sonny Boy Jensen, and Dolph Muni were found guilty of the hijack murder of truck drivers Warren Grover and Luther Sims. Both were sentenced to death in the electric chair at Huntsville Penitentiary. Each of the convicted men made an appeal for clemency. And in January of 1949, the sentence of Dolph Muni was commuted to life imprisonment. But the petition of Sonny Boy Jensen was denied. And on the morning of February 19, 1949, he was executed. And now, here again is the star of our show... Joel McRae. Folks, we want to thank you for the wonderful letters you've been sending to us and the warm and friendly interest you've always shown toward our show. A lot of you have asked the question, what's the title of the theme music heard on Tales of the Texas Rangers? The music you hear at the opening and closing of our show is the Texas Ranger song, written by Sam Coslow and Harry Bain, and is arranged by Robert Armbruster, the conductor of the NBC Orchestra. We're glad to know that so many of you like it, we do, too. And so, Mr. Armbruster, the Texas Ranger song, if you please. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Frenchie. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Whitfield Connor, Herb Ellis, Parley Bear, Wilms Herbert, Paul Daboff, and Bill Conrad. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcutt, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keats. Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Next Sunday, one week from today, Tales of the Texas Rangers will relinquish its broadcast time to enable you to hear one of the season's most dramatic events, the Theater Guild on the Air, full hour-and-a-half production of Hamlet. And make a note to be back with us for another exciting Tales of the Texas Rangers two weeks from tonight. Next week, it's Hamlet. In two weeks, another Tales of the Texas Rangers starring Joel McRae. Be sure to listen. Now the $64 question. Tomorrow, hear the Boston Pops on NBC.